This is an MC1000 treadmill motor control board. In this video, I'm not only going to show you how to hack it so that you can use this to power a treadmill motor without the obnoxious treadmill control panel, but I'm also going to show you how I figured out how to hack it. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So the first thing I want to do is show you an older version of this. And if you've done anything with treadmill motor control boards, you've probably seen it. This is an MC60. This was used in treadmills for a lot of years. It is super easy to hack. And a lot of guys are powering their treadmill motors for their bench grinders and mills and lathes using a treadmill motor controller just like this one. One really nice thing about the MC60 is it is really super easy to control. All you have to do is attach a potentiometer to the H, W, and L terminals, and you're good to go. The only downside to this board is the soft start, but there are ways to bypass that. You can clip a resistor and avoid soft start. You can also put a switch in line with the W and eliminate soft start. But this, even though they look very similar, seems a little bit more complicated. Let's take a closer look at what we have going on here. Got a whole series of connectors that connect to the treadmill control board. You've got your power coming in from the AC side. You've got your power going out to the motor, and then you've got two very important terminals right there with the word choke written between them. And this right here is a big reason why people struggle to get this working. The nice thing about this board is just like the MC60, you can use a potentiometer to control this. But when I look over here at these pins, I don't see the H, the W, and the L. I do see some Ls. I do see a W. There's no H. Well, the first thing you have to understand is the W is the key. That's the wipe. That goes into the center of your potentiometer. So having that gets us halfway there. The second thing you need to understand is this board is basically using a low voltage to determine how fast to go. In other words, electricity is coming into the potentiometer, and as you turn that potentiometer up or down, you are changing the voltage, and it is that change in voltage that changes the speed of the motor. Now, if we look down deep inside between these two, we see 12, which there's a plus that you can't quite see. I believe it's probably underneath this guy right here. So that's 12 volts positive, and there's an L. So right there, we have figured out exactly what we need to do to control this board with a potentiometer. This is the wiring harness that came with this board, and I stripped out the wires that I didn't need. The important ones are the blue one, which is the fourth pin up. It goes to the center of the potentiometer. That is the wipe. And then we have a red and a black, and that's 12 volts positive, and then the black, which is the ground. So that's all we have to do. If we wire up the black to one side, the red to the other, now if these two get reversed, the only difference is which direction you turn the potentiometer to increase or decrease speed. So if you want to turn it clockwise and have the speed increase, then the red goes on one side, the black on the other. But if you want it to be counterclockwise, you flip the two. So that's really all it takes. You've got, as I said, black, red, and blue. With the MC60, I found that you can use a 5K potentiometer, you can use a 10K potentiometer, you can try a bunch of different ones, and it really doesn't affect the function of the MC60. The potentiometer that you must use for this unit is a 2K potentiometer. If you use one bigger than that, it will work, but it will not work well. I also recommend running two potentiometers in series for a total of two kilo ohms, one being significantly smaller than the other. So 
maybe like a one and a half K or a 1.75 K and then a 0.25 K or a 250 ohm potentiometer. The reason you do that is two potentiometers, one being significantly smaller than the other, gives you a fine speed control. Now, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to go with the 2K potentiometer. So let's go ahead and hook this up and let's see how it works. All right, we have it powered off, but it is plugged in. We go ahead and power it on, and as you can see, those lights come on. Turn the potentiometer all the way down, and that's to get past the soft start feature. Now, as I've showed in other videos, if you put a kill switch on this blue wire, you can eliminate the soft start feature. And there's probably a resistor somewhere in here that can be clipped to eliminate the soft start feature, but I have not taken the time to figure that out yet. Then, we start turning the potentiometer, lights come on, another light comes on, and nothing's happening. The motor's not spinning and nothing is working. I hooked it up the way it's supposed to be hooked up. Why isn't it working? Well, the reason it's not working is that other set of terminals that I showed you. We'll power that down right there where it says choke. This board is kind of forcing you to run a choke. Now, What's a choke? Well, my videos have gone over that in great detail. It is basically this right here. It is wire coiled around a core that creates a magnetic field within that core and helps eliminate power spikes. And if you're running any kind of SCR voltage controller, which this is, which an MC60 is, you really should be running one of these because if you don't, you're gonna significantly shorten the life of the brushes inside your motor. The way this board is set up, the voltage going to the motor is directly tied into this choke terminal, and the power produced by the board is coming out right there. What that means is you either need to run a jumper across those two terminals, which is a poor idea. Again, if you're gonna use this type of board, you should be running a choke, or, you just simply need to plug a choke in, which is what we're gonna do. Let's try this again. Power it up, lights come on. Second set of lights come on. Look at that. We have a motor that's going. Now I found with this unit that the start speed is pretty fast. However, once you get it spinning, you can bring the speed down quite a bit. It's just the initial speed setup that is required to get it going. You gotta go really slow on this. If you go too far, it doesn't stay running and you have to start over. That's about the slowest speed and that's a very usable speed. You can use that for all kinds of things. Down right next to this plug-in, there's a little orangish yellow potentiometer and that allows you to adjust base speed. When I first received this board and hooked it up, it was super slow at startup, and the max speed was kind of a medium speed for this motor. By taking a screwdriver and putting it on that potentiometer, I was able to turn it up. Now, I currently have it turned up to full speed, but it really depends on your application. If you're wanting something that is turning quite a bit slower, all you have to do is get in there with a screwdriver and turn that down. And that, in a nutshell, is the MC1000. Super easy to hook up, almost identical to the MC60, and all you have to do is, as I said, use the red, blue, and black wires, connect them to a potentiometer, and then make sure that you are running a choke or a jumper wire across the choke terminals. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. So that you can use it. Wow, that street sweeper is really annoying.